This is the second video on Mussolini and fascism and the expansion of Italy in the 1930s. Um, this video will cover Italy and World War I. When World War I broke out, Italy declared neutrality. Officially, they were part of the Triple Alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary, which they had been in since 1882. However, there was an immense divide within the government over whether or not to actually participate militarily. There was also a debate about who to go to war against, which side. The nationalistic ANI called for taking up arms in a show of Italian strength against Austria, who was a traditional enemy. Then they had had territorial disputes in the past. The Catholic Party opposed to this because they didn't want to see a war with another Catholic country. The PSI were against participation in the war in totality because they saw it as an imperialistic war. Some in the socialist parties, however, split, arguing that the war might actually destabilize liberal Italy and lead to a revolution sooner. One of those was a young socialist by the name of Benito Mussolini, who we'll talk more about in a later video. Finally, after much pushing by Britain, Italy entered the war in April of 1915 on the side of the Allies. This was after the Treaty of London had been signed between the two, which basically said Italy, if it fought on the Allied side, would get the territories of the Brenner Pass, Trieste, and Dalmatia from Austria at the end of the war. This also promised that they would have a role in the post-war Balkans, specifically Albania. Between 1915 and 1918, nearly 5.7 million soldiers out of a population of 40 million joined. Italians mostly joined up under the pretenses that they would be granted farmland as a result of their efforts. Many were peasants who had never left the village. Mainly they fought against Austria and Germany. Italy was unprepared for the war. It was a disastrous affair for them and they suffered a higher casualty rate than Britain. 39.1% of Italy's forces died, compared to Britain's 35.8%. 600,000 Italian troops died in total, and millions were wounded. Many felt that the Italian government had mishandled the war and didn't know what they were doing. They equally despised the socialist and communist who opposed the war totally, and they were looking for a third option. Matters were just made worse when, at the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, Italy was only given some of its promised rewards. They were given some control of Tyrol and Dalmatia. Italians decreed the treaties as a, quote, mutilated peace. They didn't benefit from the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. They didn't replace the Austrian Habsburgs as the power of the Balkans. And particularly angering <clears throat> was the refusal by the Allies to give Italy the port of Fiume, which was in a Croatian town. The port had a large Slavic population, and President Wilson of America wanted to see that area part of the new country of Yugoslavia. However, the Italians considered it rightfully theirs. It was the dispute over Fiume that actually led to Prime Minister Orlando of Italy withdrawing from the peace conference. After the war, anger at the government and problems with the economy resulted in riots and strikes and more support for communism in Italy. 2.5 million demobilized soldiers returned home with little support and physical and mental ailments. Many became homeless and aimless. Some historians call this time for Italy the, quote, imaginary disease, as Italy acted as if it had lost the war even though it had not. Post-war, the economy of Italy did not do well. The unemployment rate grew to 2 million by 1919. New restrictions on immigration made matters worse, as the United States had limited Italian immigration due to xenophobic fears there, meaning that many Italians, poorer Italians, could not leave Italy and go to America as their relatives had done in the past. It is no surprise, then, that during this time the Communist began to see it as an opportune time to stage a revolution. Heeding the call of Lenin and Russia for a worldwide revolution, 1919 to 1920 is sometimes known as the Red Years in Italy, where there were several attempted communist uprisings. For instance, in 1920, one million workers went on strike. 
Also, the PSI steadily gained votes in Parliament, and farmers began organizing themselves into collectives. The middle class became terrified that a communist revolution throughout the country was imminent. They had seen what had happened in Russia, and Catholic newspapers regularly filled their pages with stories of atrocities committed by communists in Russia, along with the famine that was happening there and the civil war. It was very devastating. Italian poet Gabriele D'Annunzio was one of the leading voices of criticism of the Paris peace. In protest of it, he led a group of 2,000 volunteers, many of them ex-soldiers, to the port of Fium in September of 1919 and began occupying it, therefore preventing Yugoslavia from taking it. They used the name Arditi in their group. They wore black shirts and fezes, which is what um, an elite group of commandos in World War I had used, known as the Arditi, which were sort of shock troops. D'Annunzio also used balcony speeches to rouse the public along with the Roman salute, all things Mussolini would later pick up on. This occupation of Fiume actually lasted a while, a couple years. Uh, eventually, in 1921, the Italian government was able to evict the occupiers from Fiume and give the port back to Yugoslavia, or over to Yugoslavia. This two-year incident was pretty embarrassing for the Italian liberal democracy. It showed how weak it was, how angry people were at World War I, and how ready the country was for a extremist leader to seize upon it and rise to power. 